Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of my homebrew spectrum analyzer series. In this video I'm going to run some initial tests on the lock detector board that I discussed last time. In the meantime I soldered up that lock detector board which you can see here um, although I haven't powered it up yet so I'll do that uh, on camera as usual. There is one RF input here uh, a limiter output and a log voltage output um, as I discussed last time and if I flip the board around this was just for preventing reflections on camera and um, if I flip the board around you can see that there is a little local power supply section down here here is the RF input going through this transformer here to the log detector chip and here are the two outputs uh, you can see that I pulled back the solder mask a section here just because the data sheet uh, of the transformer suggested to do that. Now uh, if I power this up as usual um, we'll get either um, blue light or blue smoke and you can guess which one is worse. That is ground. These are the 10 volts coming from uh, my uh, control board and yes so this works um, and this is drawing about 20 milliamps now in addition to what I had before bef before I connected it up so um, I'm going to measure a few voltages first that's what Scott is suggesting uh, in his uh, testing plan for this board and then um, I'll uh, do some little experiment on my own just to further verify that this is working as required because I had some issues probing voltages on camera last time, I decided to put the board uh, on top of this sort of hollow uh, reel of wire here. And the idea is that there is obviously connectors on the back of the board and uh, that prevents me from putting the board flush on the bench and applying some pressure. So um, um, using this hollow reel here, I can still apply a little bit of pressure um, without uh, without bending the connectors or anything. Um, so um, obviously um, there is a metallic ring here and I have to uh, to make sure not to short out anything on the back but that's not the case, I checked. Uh, apart from the LED, um, or anything that is exposed on the back of the board is uh, actually just ground. So, so that's fine. You can see that uh, the blue LED is actually um, shining into this hole here and you can see a bit of reflection here from the blue LED. So I'm going to measure various voltages. Um, first off, on the regulator, I'm going to measure the input and the output, that should be 10 and 5 volts, and then I'm going to measure uh, the various uh, supply, power supply pins uh, of the chip, um, as well as some output stuff that, that we'll see. And this is all uh, according to Scotty's test procedure. And um, actually the other thing you cannot see is um, I have the tripod with the camera right in front of the bench. So whenever I'm probing stuff I sort of have to do it from the side here. And this is really awkward um, so uh, this might not look very professional but I'm trying to do my best here not to short out pins and things like that. So first I'm going to measure the input of the regulator um, and I'll use this capacitor here instead of the pin itself just because it's convenient and that's 10 volts so that's fine and the output should be about 5 volts and it's 4.933 so that is fine um, then I'm going to measure the first um, supply input of the chip that is pin number two and I'm going to measure just this capacitor here instead of the pin itself uh, out of the same re reason and uh, you can see that there is about uh, 100 millivolts drop from the supply here which is 4.933 to, um, to this um, supply pin here which is 4.833 and that is obviously um, some voltage drop that happens in this 10 ohm or across this 10 ohms resistor here. According to Scotty, this should be uh, a drop of uh, about 92 millivolts and I have pretty much 100 millivolts drop. So I guess that's close enough. And I'll also measure um, pin number eight down here. Uh, this is just the enable pin. Uh, should be at the same voltage and it is. So that's fine. 
Next, I'm going to measure pin number 15, which is the second supply input of the chip. Um, and I'm going to use this capacitor here because I really I cannot probe it from that side because otherwise you wouldn't see anything. So let me try to measure that. And that is 4.86. So I have 40 plus 30. I have about 70 millivolts of drop um, across the other 10 ohms resistor. And uh, that should be 64 millivolts. So that's fine as well. Next, I will probe some voltages that are relevant to the limiter functionality of the chip only. The first one is pin number 9, which should be about 400 millivolts absolute. So let's have a look. Pin number 9. And that's 417 millivolts. So that's good enough. And the last two measurements are pin number 12 and 13, which should be 25 millivolts below the voltage of the output voltage of the regulator. So the regulator was, I believe, 4.933. Yes, so that should be 4.90 something. If I probe this first output here, that's 4.8. 8.3 so that's more like 100 millivolts below and not 25 and the other one is also the same so that is a tad low actually um, let me turn off the camera and check the data sheet for what is going on exactly here and I'll come back to you in a second Okay, so uh, this is the page of the data sheet that shows an equivalent circuit of the limiter output stage. Um, this is the pin I probed before, that was around 400 millivolts. That makes sense because uh, you've got 400 millivolts reference input here and a unity gain operational amplifier. So uh, you should have uh, 400 millivolts at the output here, um, which, which was actually the case. But look at the limiter output, pin number 12 and 13. These are actually just open collector outputs uh, of um, two NPN transistors. So that's just an open collector. And if we consider the schematic of the board that I'm probing right now, um, these two outputs here are pulled up by these 50 ohms resistors. And the 50 ohms resistors are tied to the second supply. That was, if I remember correctly, 4.86 volts or something. So there is already a considerable drop across this resistor of 50 millivolts or something. Um, and that's why I can't see any way for um, the voltage on these pins here to be higher than what we have on the supply because this is just an open collector here. Um, so this can pull the line low, but um, when, when the transistor is off, um, this line here should, should sit somewhere around the voltage of the second supply, but certainly not higher than that. So, so let me measure that again. Um, the second power supply is 4.86 and the output is 4.83. So there is about the 30 millivolts drop from the second supply to the limiter output. And maybe that's just a mistake in the test procedure because the 25 millivolts drop should be from the regulator, but maybe that's just a typo and, and it's actually from the second supply. Um, uh, for sure, I'll, I'll check on the mailing list for that, but um, given the fact that I really don't see any way for the voltage to be that high, that is 25 millivolts below the regulator output, um, I'll, I'll just continue. Um, and if there is anything of interest here, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that uh, in a later video. Before I put everything together and test the whole setup with the spectrum analyzer software on the computer, I want to make sure that the log detector board operates the way it should. And uh, I'd like to test this 
uh, in a bit more rigorous way than just measuring the voltages as I just did. So um, that's why I came up with this little test here. Um, I'm going to feed in um, a special waveform into the lock detector board. I'm going to show you that waveform. If I turn on the signal generator um, that is built into this oscilloscope, um, this is set to a 1 megahertz, 500 millivolts peak to peak um, sine wave. Um, but if I turn on modulation, uh, I can actually turn this into an amplitude modulated signal that sort of has an amplitude that is ramping up and down. I can zoom into this to show you that this really is just a sine wave that has an increasing and decreasing amplitude. And this is what I'm going to feed into the RF input of the log detector board. And then I'm going to show um, the log voltage output as well as the limiter output. The log voltage output um, should be um, increasing as the amplitude increases here, although it shouldn't increase in a, in a linear way, it should increase in a logarithmic way because that's what this uh, what this log detector should do after all. And also um, it should get rid of the, um, let's call this this carrier waveform, like this high frequency waveform in there and just show uh, almost like the, the RF envelope of this, um, of this waveform but in a logarithmic way. The limiter output should be a square wave because all the limiter does is just amplifies um, the RF waveform uh, until it clips, so we, we should get a more or less consistent square wave at 1 megahertz here. So I will remove the probe from the function generator output. Now obviously this is just noise because um, the probe is not there anymore. Um, let's turn this off and turn on the first channel and um, connect the lock detector board to, um, to the RF generator. The log voltage output is already connected um, and that's exactly what I was expecting. Um, this is moving and that's probably some sort of artifact uh, from uh, the triggering because I'm actually triggering from the signal generator trigger pulse itself. Um, although actually it shouldn't really be moving so maybe this is a bug or, or something I'm unaware of. But in any case um, the waveform looks exactly the way I'm expecting it to look. Um, we sort of have this logarithmic kind of curve here um, and that increases as the amplitude of the original input waveform is increasing, just not in a linear fashion, but rather in a logarithmic fashion. And uh, next I will hook this up to the limiter output. I have to turn off the camera for that because uh, I'm actually lacking a, uh, an SMA to BNT um, adapter, so I have to remove um, the log voltage output and uh, hook up the limiter output instead. And this is the limiter output. I changed the, uh, uh, the vertical division to, to 50 millivolts per division. Um, so that's uh, actually a 50 millivolts peak to peak square wave, exactly the way it should be. Um, I actually can zoom into this a little bit and we see this nice square wave um, and that's actually reaching the peak um, voltage no matter whether the amplitude was low or high. So uh, again, this is exactly doing what it should, uh, the 50 millivolts peak to peak checkout. So I don't have any doubts that, that there is anything wrong uh, with the log detector board. So all there is left to do is to um, connect the output of the log detector to the ADC board um, and to connect everything to the control board and then to run the spectrum analyzer software and have a look at what we get. I will actually continue to feed in um, this waveform here and we're pretty much expecting to see um, exactly what we saw at the log detector output, the, the log voltage output and um, just using the spectrum analyzer software. Okay, now I have the spectrum analyzer software running with the signal generator connected to the log detector RF input, the log detector log voltage output connected to the ADC magnitude input and the ADC board connected to the control board. And uh, you can see that this works nicely. 
um, I had to drop down the frequency of how fast um, the wave is ramping up and then way down. Um, this was I think 10 or even 100 kilohertz on the scope and now I set it to, to 1 hertz. This is why you see um, this um, um, waveform on the screen uh, rising and falling once per second. Uh, interesting here is that there is uh, this lower peak down here is not always at the same place and that's just due to sampling so it's as before uh, it's it's uh, it's not sampling where it's really uh, at the low voltage and therefore you don't see that okay i hope that was interesting and the next video is either a third one in this lock detector series although um, i told a friend of mine what i'm planning to do and he was quite interested in that so we might do that um, together and therefore there might be a slight delay in which case I will continue with the DDS board. I hope that was interesting if you have anything to say about that or share please do so in the comments and I thank you for watching.